Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to proceed the restoration and repair of the frequency counter. And the next module that I want to repair is the crystal oscillator. Well, as we have seen in the previous video, it's missing the crystal, uh, the overnized crystal. And, however, I have started to give uh, uh, some look a few days ago. I found this uh, tube that is gassy and I have replaced it. Just uh, 1287. Nothing extraordinary. I have also replaced a few capacitors down below because uh, oxidation on the terminals, they broke off uh, very easily. So simple so far but i then start the unit i connect to the power supply i have already powered it on and look at what i'm monitoring the output from the oscillator right and look at what i have i already have 10 kilo cycle not precise, 10.3 kilo cycle without any crystal. So I start to be a bit lost and trying to understand what's happening. I need to grab the schematic. Okay, so this is the crystal oscillator uh, module. Clearly, we have the crystal over there, the overnized crystal. We have uh, the oscillator and the buffer amplifier. And then we have three dividers. Now, these dividers, uh, they works in a very uh, unusual way. But uh, to understand that, I need something that uh, I was uh, hoping to find. And indeed I have. This is the original technical manual dated December 1954. It's a very uh, beautiful manual. And yeah, indeed in this manual we have all the informations pictures look how beautiful is this picture we also have uh, some information about the junction box that also missing by the way uh, in the manual it is stated that these regenerative oscillators should be detuned of a certain amount to avoid the free running otherwise this circuit will start to uh, to free run and indeed, is exactly what I'm having now. So at least we know that the last uh, oscillator is working because uh, we have a 10 kilo cycle without any crystal. Now, in the manual, it, during the alignment process, it is indicated the exact frequency that should be detuned to, to which should be detuned. And this is exactly what I'm going to do right now. I want properly uh, align the tanks here in order to have the module uh, running and check that is running correctly and gives the uh, right uh, result. So ready to receive the crystal. This is because I also be, uh, again, lucky enough to find this overnized crystal. I already have opened it and work on it a bit. This is the uh, heating element. Here we have the uh, thermal switch with the lamp driving signal. And by removing this, we will have our crystal. This crystal is actually very big and not the type that we need. This is uh, 100 kilocycle as uh, required for this 
of an Isaac crystal, and this is simply the socket. I already have uh, managed to uh, change the wiring here, the pin out, because it was clearly not matching as uh, we need. This overnized crystal is coming from another uh, frequency counter. It's a very special one. And it was uh, just replaced a long time ago. And I now found why there was a broken pin inside the, the here, inside the socket. And yeah, it was just replaced. By the way, the frequency counter that uh, used this uh, uh, overnized is the FR114 or 114, which is a very special and unique frequency counter due to the, the type of the vacuum tubes uh, that uh, it uses. It's a very special uh, design, but I will cover that uh, in a future video. I have the frequency counter uh, need the same uh, as this. Uh, a refurbishment and by the way my frequency counter have this uh, uh, overnight crystal working so putting this apart we need to talk just a second about the crystal I found a gentleman in the US that uh, allow me to buy it the right frequency and is on the way Clearly, we will need a uh, few weeks to receive. However, we have uh, enough work to do on the other modules that uh, we can go uh, ahead with the uh, project. By the way, I want to be sure that this uh, uh, unit is working. So without any further ado, let's get right to the alignment. Well, before to proceed, I want to just give you a quick note, information about those uh, oscillators indeed those dividers divide by five the incoming frequency so in total we have a division of 125 it's uh, like uh, five uh, elevated at uh, with an exponential of three um, each dividers uh, resonate to a specific frequency that beating with incoming frequency will uh, heterodyne and subtract the oscillating frequencies to the incoming frequency and each stage perform this kind of task it's uh, simple in in the concept but very complicated alignment and circuitry so it's very clever and for the age and this i believe it's um, designed like that to have a precise uh, uh, frequency very precise frequency and in the manual is stated that a, a brand new uh, instrument is capable to reach the 0 0.000015% of, per of precision, which is impressive for that era. By the way, let's go ahead with the alignment. In the manual, we have uh, the exact frequency that we must detune each single uh, tank over there, here, or oscillator, and this is exactly what I want to do now. So let me prepare the setup and see how it works. The alignment of the last in a series of the divider has already fixed the free running since I'm having, I'm having right now no signal. And if I will feed my 10.7 kilo cycle, I'm having what expected to be. So, I will go ahead with the tuning. Well, the last, uh, or I should have said the first divider, I'm having a problem. It is right the last uh, adjustment, so it is required 
over there to adjust the signal generator to 975 kilo cycle, place the uh, signal onto pin 7 of V201, 204, sorry, which is uh, this one, pin 7 here, so to the grid, G1, and check the output on pin 2 of the same tube, that uh, actually is the output from the plate and with this 39 picofarad capacitor i have checked the signal at pin 7 and yeah i i will move the camera and show you what i have okay so the second channel the blue one uh, i'm now at pin 7 and i have the signal i am now at pin 2 nothing and should be amplified and on pin 6 which is right at the plate very low amount no amplification so i suspected that uh, i might have some biasing problem so what i've done I've checked with my meter the G1 voltage that should be negative and I'm having plus almost 500 millivolts so I might have a leaky capacitor here and I suppose C212 220 picofarad so let me try to replace it well clearly i was we spoken before uh, since uh, the problem i have on pin 2 and i have uh, trimmed this capacitor here c210 which is right this and I now have negative voltage, so I have a leaky capacitor here, this, and indeed, it's already have uh, uh, like, uh, how can I say, it? it's melting the wax, so must we replace it? Okay, the capacitor is replaced it. So let's see now on pin two, we are having minus 200 and on pin seven, uh, easy to get in, minus 190. So bias seems fine. Let's see if uh, also does oscillate. And yes, indeed, the capacitor replacement has fixed the problem. I am at pin two and I am now having the output. So let me point the camera on the scope. Okay, so I now have moved the camera. So we should see the peak yeah uh, it's responding as expected very nice all right so the adjustment is done it's complete these are the capacitors that i have replaced it i wonder if i apply with an external signal generator 1.25 mag if i may have 10 kilohertz at the output so let me make this setup and test okay i'm applying a 1.25 meg through these two capacitor capacitors in place of the crystal and i'm having 10 kilohertz and if i'm going to measure 
to the frequency counter. I just need to move a bit. Okay, so this is my counter. It's bouncing a bit, but please consider the setup. We are, let's say, spot on. So the module is working, at least at this extent. When I will receive the crystal, I will check that the wall chain, including the ether, it's uh, working fine, but it's really promising so far. So I will put this module aside, waiting for the crystal, and I will go ahead with another module. Uh, by the way, while I was working on this module, I have, received, I have received something else that I'm going to show you right now. And this is the pocket that I have just received with the four connectors. Let me put this aside. Those connectors should be those that will plug here and indeed they are so i now can go ahead with the order for the hardware to prepare the junction box and this is very nice so another important step ahead because i now have this model that seems to work fine Clearly, I need to finish the uh, overnight crystal, but I'm quite confident that it will work. So what I will do now is to finish the clean, the cleaning of this, and I will do it off camera. And I will uh, grab another module and see how it is. And I have also received the extender wire for Collins receiver, the original one. So I have recovered also the uh, possibility to troubleshoot those receivers. That is a very important uh, part. It's uh, almost like an instrument. The wire is CX2473 slash U, which is the original cord to extend the wiring of audio section of Collins R390 series uh, receivers. And this is the next module that I wanna take care. As we have seen in previous videos, this unit were missing all the screws, so I'm a bit scared that may maybe miss something down below there hopefully not and so i will grab the schematic and see what it does okay this is the interpolation oscillator sub chassis and it uses it has been used like uh, almost vertical uh, driver and for, for the vertical deflection uh, in the scope. And this clearly, it's part of the uh, circuit that uh, make the Lissajou pattern on the, uh, on the scope. So in the next video, I wanna clean it up and check down below how is inside and clean the dial here, the dial uh, window that it's not possible to see what it is indicated by this scale, this dial. Um, so yeah, I think that that's it for this video. And another step ahead is done. So take care, see you soon.